right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to write C++ code for the black pill. Now, fortunately, we can stand on the shoulders of giants. And in this case, it's Brayden Sunwood. He has a very nice blog. And so he goes over absolutely everything in splendid detail. There is absolutely nothing else you need outside of this blog. So I highly recommend perhaps even turning this video off and just uh, having a look at what he has done here. This is all text, so you can simply copy and paste it. But just for completeness and to make this series as holistic as possible and to document everything I've done, I'll uh, go over it in my on my channel, but it's basically all him. Again, just splendid work. He goes over absolutely everything. All right, so let's create a new project, STM32 project, and we're gonna select our MCU, and in this case, it's an STM32F411CU6. Now there's a Turkish version and a regular one. We're gonna select the regular one. Give our project a name, so test bench, hello world, CPP. And very important in this case, do select C++ as the target language. If you will not do this, you'll get a bunch of very weird nondescript errors. And so just be sure to always click this if you do want to use C++ in your projects. Uh, so next and finish. And so next up, we'll select our pin. So the LED is tied to 13. So port C13, GPIO output. All right, so this is gonna allow us to have control over whether we drive it high or low. If you don't do this and you still drive it high and low, you will not have driving current. Next up, we'll select our high-speed clock as crystal ceramic and over in sys this is not super critical but i've seen people do it and i've always done it so just select trace asynchronous and cystic and let's head on over to the clock configuration and speed stuff up so right now everything's running at 16 megahertz and it can run up to 100 so yeah let's get that done so high speed clock over here We'll want to divide this by 25 and select it over here with this mux and you can see now the peripheral clocks are too high it wants it to be at uh, 50 we just hit divide by 2 over here and yeah this should be enough so click the IOC name over here and command S and this will generate all the code All right, and as I've talked about previously, we still have a main.c over here. So this will be located in source. So we're over here. Main.c and main.h, and everything is still .c, right? So this init function will contain code generated by the IOC, and everything is c, and it will contain all the... Um, all the settings and everything so you really can't force at least at the moment everything to move over to C++ so what we will do and what uh, Brayden told us to do told me to do at least is we'll create a wrapper that basically allows us to call a C++ environment from a C environment and keep in mind this will all be boiled down to machine code right to whatever core this is running a risk 5 or arm core and so whether it's C++ or C or whatever or Java doesn't really make a difference so yeah let's uh, let's get to work we'll need two files one will be our new uh, main.c so to say right so all our code and our infinite loop will reside in this file and this will contain objects in C++ magic and what have you. So let's create that. So I'll name it event loop cpp dot cpp finish. 
and we'll also want to create a header file for it so new header file event loop cpp dot hpp okay so finish and yeah over here we'll want to define to declare sorry event loop cpp right so this is the function that will actually contain our infinite loop and we'll be defining it over here but we're declaring it over in the header file and we'll need the wrapper between the two worlds and we'll be defining it in this case over here and it looks a bit strange don't worry about it it's just a set and forget type deal you don't need to worry about it so here goes boom and so yeah don't worry about it this uh, definitely works and just leave it at it as is this whole header file can stay as is and we'll never need to touch it again basically so over in the c++ file we will want to add a few bells and whistles all right so initially let's include uh, c++ headers and so the first one we'll include will be the header for this file and then we can also include c headers in here also using x turn c and in this case i'm also including the main.h and this will allow us to use all the hardware abstraction layer stuff so all the functions for driving gpio pins and whatever they seem to really want this include and so right at the bottom of this file after everything was written and you want this to be at the bottom always we have this extern c where we actually define the event loop c function and in this case all it will do is it will call the c plus plus event loop and so that's it again a set and forget type deal and all that's left to do now in this file is to actually define the event loop function and so let's do that over here and yeah just as a quick reference for people coming over from arduino here you have to basically do everything by hand and this would be the init right this function will be called it'll do this and then it'll be stuck in this while one and this is your main control loop now and it is in a c plus plus environment so yeah that's basically it we can start writing our code over here and we'll just do the same blinky as before. So nothing too spectacular over here, just turning the LED on and off. I'm using set and reset. In this case, set actually turns it off and reset turns it on, but anyway. And what we need to do is somehow call this event loop C from main.c, right? Because at this point in time, nothing over here is being called. So let's head on over to main.c. I'll try to remember to make these a bit larger next time so we'll want to stick to user begin and end uh, brackets and we don't want to go into this while true because yeah it'll just mean a bit more ram being used and we're gonna have our infinite loop anyway so might as well just put it outside but after the gpio init that's for sure and so over here let's uh, just give ourselves some breathing room and event loop c and now it's not going to know where this is from so we'll need to include it as well and again make sure to do this inside the user uh, tags so include and uh, we're going to use quote marks because this is a local file event loop cpp.hpp okay so that's fine let's uh, build it so command b will build zero with zero very nice okay um actually don't know the shortcut for flashing it but uh, let's have a quick look at this and burn it it's going to ask us for the debug config. Uh, if you have issues with your debugger, just try moving to JLink or OpenOCD. I've had success with both GDB and OpenOCD, depending on the 
debugger. These are the fake cheap ones from AliExpress. They're two, three bucks, and they seem to work fine with the ST-Link debugger. Uh, serial wire debug. I don't know. Yeah, I wouldn't really change much over here at this point in time. So just click OK, and it's going to continue the process, and let's see if it works. All right, so I think this is a success. Let's go 2000 and 2000. Let's burn it again. And if this works, this will basically wrap up the video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments. Otherwise, have a good one.